Uh, NVIDIA <laughs> is requiring companies to be transparent about RTX oh, no. 3000 specs. So the source here is The Verge. And yes, I know, I know, but actually they've done a pretty good job of getting in, of digging into this. Um, NVIDIA previously, okay, so if you don't know what's going on with RTX 30 series, then you probably didn't watch the WAN show. I think it was last week, but in a nutshell, or any other week. There's, we've like, about this a few yeah, times. there's well over a dozen different SKUs of these mobile RTX 30 GPUs total, like well over a dozen. And even though you've only got like 3060, 3070, 3080, and then even max Q, max P, which is for performance, theoretically that's only six. But there's like way more than that because there's all these different TDPs that they can run at. Now, in the past, NVIDIA encouraged but did not require manufacturers of laptops to be transparent about the actual technical specifications of the GPUs that they were including. It is now completely mandatory. So this is a good step in the right direction, but he's not working, so he really doesn't have to take my call. I'd actually love to have one of my writers join us for this conversation. Um, because this doesn't necessarily completely solve the problem. Hold on a second. Let's just uh, let's just see if he picks up. Hello. Hey, uh, I know you're not working right now, but do you do you want to talk for a couple minutes on the WAN show about sort of a, a near and dear to your heart topic? Uh, sure. If you're busy, it's fine. It, it really is fine. Okay, chill. Um, all right, so we're talking about NVIDIA now requiring companies to be transparent about their RTX 3000 specs, right? So they actually have to okay, disclose yeah. the TDP. Now, do you want to share with me a little anecdote that uh, I was on my way to the bathroom and uh, Alex's desk is right next to the bathroom. It's, it's not as bad as it sounds. He actually chose that desk because it has more space, um, you know, and it's fine. We have actually a pretty, it's a pretty solid door so you can't hear too much grunting. Anyway, the point is, I walked past his desk and he tells me this story. So go ahead, hit, hit us with the story. Oh, well, I don't know if this is valid anymore because it turns out that the BIOS was just broken on both of them. Oh. It, was, it was like AMD's BIOS rollout was just garbage. But as of the last time that I tested, the 80 watt TDP uh, 3080 had about four FPS less than the 150 watt one and mm. they're both boosting to about the same core clocks thereabouts it kind of just depends on like the thermals it seems has nothing to do with like the actual tdp right okay so basically what we had learned but now we are apparently not sure if it's 100 percent true uh so we're gonna have to get back to you guys on that one is that even though you might get an RTX 3080 whatever watt, okay, so that's like the, the TDP, it seems like the actual performance, like we've seen with even their desktop GPUs over the last number of years, really comes down to the GPU boosting to whatever the heck it wants, and that's what you're going to get. So if you go and you throw like a 150-watt thermal solution on an 80-watt 3080, you might actually get very similar performance to if you put 150 watt thermal solution on a on a quote unquote 150 watt 3080. But I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, do we think that I maybe? Also, yeah, go ahead. I should also say that the 80 watt one was a lot louder when it was doing that. That was like fans cranked and overclocked in the ASUS like tuning thing. Mm hmm. It was more like 9 FPS lower. So I think it was like 81 FPS versus 90 on overclocked. But it's the sort of thing where like, if you want the performance, you can just turn the fans up and it's there. Right, and then you just also have a much thinner, lighter laptop. Yeah. Okay, all right, thanks, Alex. You have a good weekend. All right. <laughs> so... 
What we don't know, though, is if there's some kind of price difference for laptop manufacturers and if there's some kind of power advantage, like, um, I mean, power consumption advantage to getting one of these like 80 watt versus 150 right. watt chips. So maybe there's some binning that's taking place. Either way, what we're learning is that there is still a lot more to learn about mobile RTX 3000 series. This is not something that has been simple, clearly, for NVIDIA and their partners to work into mobile devices. Um, there's a couple more news items here. NVIDIA says, we are requiring OEMs to update their product pages to the max Q technology features for each GeForce laptop, as well as clocks and power, which communicates the expected GPU performance in that system. So it's a step in the right direction, but based on Alex's anecdote about finding that if he just like, turned it into like boost mode or whatever Asus calls that on that particular model, uh, the performance completely changes. We just, we just don't really know exactly what we're dealing yeah. with until we have an industry-wide measure that's like, uh, you know, however many Fortnite FPSs or, <laughs> and I, I, I don't know what that would end up looking like. So The Verge references how their MSI GP66 Leopard with an RTX 3070 was able to outperform an MSI GS66 Stealth with an RTX 3080, and that it would not be possible to tell that from specs alone. So they're keeping an eye on it. We're going to be keeping an eye on it, but there's part of the I'm problem. I'm sure you'll hear more about this on WAN Show in the future. This has been an ongoing conversation. I do enjoy how they, like, NVIDIA has been, like, repeatedly shooting themselves in the foot with, with all these, like, weird naming setups. And uh, their their end result of that was like, we're requiring the, the the other companies to be transparent about the performance, like just pushing so much responsibility onto other people. Well, I understand, like they do. I I think it is the right move. I just find the wording around it kind of funny um, because it it makes it kind of sound like it was as though they did something wrong the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And has nothing um, to do with Nvidia releasing more than a dozen SKUs across three different model names. And yeah, not yeah. having a clear difference, um, <laughs> you know, in the in the actual product marketing. So yeah. you know, good job, Nvidia. Glad you're sort of working on fixing this up. Um, yeah. I, I wish you had made it more clear in the first place. I, I mean, honestly, what we really need is, and as, this is going to sound crazy. I'm about to sound crazy, Luke. Are you ready okay. for insanity? Yeah. What Excited. we really need is NVIDIA to take a more Intel-like approach to their product naming. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. But Intel actually has this figured out with different suffixes no, for different so, like, TDPs. And yeah, yeah, U is like super ultra low power and F is uh, has no onboard GPU or whatever. And like T is low power, but like desktop, like... They, they, they have, I mean, I think they've kind of broken some of their naming schemes, but... They were trying, though, with Q and sort of P, unofficial P. Yeah, it's just that they, like, went and introduced way more SKUs than they had suffixes. And now we have this problem. Yeah. 